This episode is completely derived from a Reddit post, which is found in the bottom of the episode show notes by Mikey Serial. I attempted to get him on to do this, but I had not heard back from him. It's been quite a long time, roughly three months. But this was a great article, and I thought it would be a great episode to do. And with that, enjoy. <laughs> And in this episode of WRL Broadcasts, we take a look at the Wonder Girl years. The game had been almost two years old, not completely bug-free, but for the most part playable and enjoyable. The community had been mostly savoring the wide variety of playable DC superheroes and villains while patiently awaiting new characters each month. Little did anyone realize that the next superheroine brought into this world could cause such commotion that the game had never seen the likes of. One single character which created an uproar that many cried for immediate changes. Two new characters arrived on July of 2018. Wonder Girl and Giganta were the latest additions, but Cassie immediately stood out as the most formable of the two, but not without controversy. The new character announcement said that she would have a copy buff passive ability, but on realized that was not to be the case. Passive became add two strength ups each time enemy buffed themselves. One player thought, there's nothing fair about it. But soon the verdict was in. The character was hit. Pun not intended. Her main selling points were Wonder Combo, a basic power punch which could send an enemy into the moon without needing a shuttle ticket, and her passive lasso of lightning which at 100% chance could wreck an entire team by stripping two buffs and doing damage about the size of a small nuclear meltdown. Amazing! Was one positive review a clear understatement. Originally thought up as a counter to Clayface teams, in the months to follow, Wonder Girl would be part of the next meta. Constantine teams would take a step back, stripped of their buffs, including including a reveal of an elusive meta leader when his invisibility and awareness were dissolved. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain, shouted Constantine in mock embarrassment as he tried to feverishly wave off the reveal. A few days later, after some random complaints, a nerf within a nerf followed. The passive occurrence was downgraded to 70% chance, along with a slight stealth nerf to damage. Would it be good enough? There were rumblings on the Reddit forum, which seemed to be divided. Yeah. What? What? Man, you, your life seems like a Harlequin nightmare, fool. She's still OP, claimed several. She stupidly broke it, described a frustrated player. The player base was divided. Many cries for nerfing were met with many objectives, wanting to leave her the way she is. The reasoning against the nerf was that buff teams needed to be controlled. With the previous Deathstroke nerf looming over them, one that turned him from meta to near useless, the dev team was in a quandary. Months earlier, they had received some backlash for reworking an average Deathstroke character into part of a super meta team that many complained was too overpowered. Now they faced a similar situation. History was looking to repeat itself, but would it? When asked to comment, Wonder Girl simply responded, I'm just doing what I was programmed to do. Asked if she felt overpowered in any way, she replied, I am Amazon. I will not admit to any fault when being put up against a team of squishies. Other than being launched by many as OP, her lasso was also reported as bugged. Revivers like Swamp Thing, Clayface, Solomon Grundy were not coming back after being whipped into their graves. The new character was looking like a mess. Because the player base was worlds apart, a few polls were taken about what to do. Many suggestions poured in, ranging from rational proposal of lowering damage on her lasso to the outrageous possibility of making it a leadership ability. A few even agreed to delete the character entirely. The chaos and controversy didn't seem to shake up Wonder Girl. I am not a leader. If they feel the need to delete me from existence, then so be it. In the end, I answer only to Zeus, she said calmly. After the polls, the changes were made. Wonder Girl was temporarily spared on this mortal plane, but her passive lasso would no longer occur unless it was eight enemy team buffs. Not quite a deathstroke neutering, but possibly something to quiet the angry mob. A few months later, the game released Atrocitus, a leader character who would enhance Wonder Girl's power by enraging her. This would jump her out to head start in the battle and make her basic hit even harder. And to follow that up, the release of Turn Zero Taunt Tank Donna Troy added to the team and strategically protected Cassie for a turn or two long enough for her to release her potent damage before anyone could reach her. This only served to fuel the already burning flames before it could go completely out. The enhanced ability to punch a full health, full shielded enemy into a permanent coma with one hit had never been witnessed before. 
After more public outcry, devs finally planned to introduce the counter to her. It seemed that almost every other month, a new character was brought into counter Wonder Girl's presence. Brainiac was the first hero of the suppressed, offering to block Cassie's lasso passive. It worked for a while, but did not have a lasting impact that that was intended. More research was made. Black Manta soon followed, with his area attack of bleed and true sight to get past defenses. Arsenal was then brought in to weaken her with a flurry of strength down arrows to entire team, in hopes of lowering her damage output. Mr. Freeze came in with his taunts to counter debuffs to all enraged immunities. Nobody could really subside her enough to drop her from the meta. There were claims to have certain character lineups to beat her, but it was still mixed in with the fury of countless unsuccessful players who failed in their attempts. Currently, a year later, outcries can still be heard of the overpowered Wonder Girl. They came in at a fraction of what was before, but newer players are still discovering what it's like to take a Cassie Haymaker to the chin, or the unassigned target of a sudden turn-stealing dominant whip to the ass. No other character has ever stirred up this much division, controversy, and frustration in the history of video games. No other digital hero has gotten so much attention as to have the game bring in several counters to disrupt them, and now there's an even new debuff created to separate from the others. It's called Empowered Strength. Only comes in singles, a higher concentrated form of strength buff, kind of like a rash cream, but until something works to keep the balance consistently, or until the game decides that creating several road detours rather than fix a single hole in the ground is futile, the cries will likely continued. The word has become an all-too-familiar part of Wonder Girl's game life, one that she has learned to tune out but she also takes pride in her legacy. I am Amazon. I will not admit to any fault when being put up against a team of squishies. Thanks for listening. Once again, thank you, Mikey Serial, for this awesome ride. Hello, everyone. It's me, Tootitron. And right now, there are a number of great charities that you could donate to to help those affected by the coronavirus, like the ones supporting bartenders and servers like myself, while we are currently all unemployed. But more urgently, you can become a patron to WRL Broadcast and get early reviews of new characters before sales end. Just go to patreon.com slash WRL Broadcasts for more details. Hey, uh, Bullsy, who's your, who's your favorite character? Oh, my!